I'm Phil Bully Supreme DeLuca. I'm Sean Alpha of <laughs> Betas Watson. And I'm Shivam. It's the holidays, damn it, but... <laughs> and <laughs> we are Commander. <laughs> <laughs> Mandarin. Yep, we've done it again. Punchy one today, boys. <laughs> mm, indeed. Hey, thanks for listening, everybody. We put a spotlight on community issues, but not that community issue. <laughs> and we never, ever talk about three banned topics, which Except are filmed. every time. <laughs> they are religion, politics, and hearthstone. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what kind of show have we got lined up for our listeners today, Phil? I was going to turn that around on you. Because we have a wonderful show lined up for our listeners. <laughs> you you want to try that one again? Oh, God. Simply we wonderful. are. We have a Rivals of Ixalan preview card. Yay. It's absolutely amazing, too. <laughs> oh, we got a good one. I'm No joke, I think this might be the best card we've ever previewed. And we've done a few I, now. You know what? I think so. Uh, the God Pharaoh's gift turned out to be pretty amazing. Yeah, it did. But this is amazing, this, amazing. This blows God Pharaoh's gift right out of the water. Yeah. This is even better than Kaideli. Oh, Ooh. I love Kaideli, though. It's, I think they're equal. I think they both do... Kaideli goes infinite pretty quickly. But this is a, such a cool card, though. But this is more fun than <laughs> Kaideli. <laughs> Oh my god, this is a first... Yep, yep. Ooh, I don't want to spoil our own podcast, but I'm super excited for this Before we talk about what the card is, you're going to have to listen to Phil tell tell you how (laughs) you can support us. (laughs) Well, folks, if you want to support us, you can go to wherever it is you get your podcast from and give us a five-star rating. That really, really helps us. We can't uh, say that enough. It actually does help us. It rises us up in the ratings, and that allows us to get more exposure, which allows us to get even more guests more frequent than we do right now. You can also visit patreon.com slash commander and MTG. And for as little as a buck a show, you can actually make a meaningful difference in the way we podcast and what we provide We want to provide more prizes, we want to do more videos, and we can't simply because of time, which means that we need to have support from our listeners in order to pay people to help us out with these things. Pardon me, I'm getting over a cold. Um, And if you're not a patron, we'd really like to know why. And if you are a patron and choose to donate at the $10 level, then come join us on Facebook. We have a private Facebook chat where we talk to our patrons. Uh, who've donated at that level or higher, and we often solicit show plan ideas from them. And they help us ask questions of our guests. It's a great group of people. Yeah, it really is a great group of people. I love all of them, and I'm not going to start naming names because it's just, it would be everybody, so there's no point in doing that. So thank you folks for donating at that level, and thank you future patrons for donating to us. Don't forget to visit us on YouTube, uh, where you can comment, rate, and subscribe. And, of course, play us to your heart's content. Right to the end of the video. That actually matters. <laughs> and uh, to quote yes. our friend of the show, Gavin Verhey, remember, folks, $1 a show for four shows a month, that's about a pack of Magic Cards. And we can all afford a pack of Magic Cards, hopefully. And just one less pack of Magic Cards to support some of your favorite content is immeasurably helpful because it helps the community grow larger bring you more content bring more ears to it and bring more players to magic and the more players we have playing magic the happier we all are because our game can continue and thrive just one pack of magic a day will help these three men (laughs) podcast in the arms of the (laughs) eight And uh, as I always say, if everyone who downloaded the show gave us $1 a month, we could probably retire and just record Commander in as a job. That would be pretty remarkable. That would... Wow. Yeah, I... 
Mm. When you put it in the perspective of like that, um, <laughs> that's insane. That's, that's not one dollar per episode. Just one dollar a month. Everyone that downloaded the show. Yeah, Sean, that's twenty five cents an episode. <laughs> <laughs> 25 cents an episode. Wow. So everybody, if you could just give us a quarter a show, just one gumball in Commander's Brew uh, parlance, we would greatly appreciate it. Now, that's probably enough. Uh, Shilling of our Shilling. Shilling. Shilling for cash. <laughs> yes. The hat is out, though, folks. Now, this is actually our first episode of the new year. So, Happy New Year, everybody, and Happy New Year to you too, gentlemen. Well, thank you very much. How was Christmas? Did you enjoy it? Fantastic. Which was your favorite gift, Phil? <laughs> actually, it was the gift that I gave to my son. We set up a computer f- to uh, run the the HTC Vive that we got last year. <laughs> nice. I like the uh, box of Unstable that I got. It's uh, super oh. exciting. I'm looking forward to cracking that. Very good. Very good. And Sean, what what about you? Uh, well, we don't actually celebrate Christmas until the Queen says uh, we're allowed to. And she's not made the declaration yet. So I'll let you know when Liz is in a festive mood. <laughs> so you're still waiting for your figgy pudding? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh <laughs> Even though we three celebrate Christmas, of course, we hope everybody who has celebrated a winter solstice ritual of your very own. We don't have winter in India. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do have a winter solstice. Theoretically, I guess. It's the coldest day of the year. It's like when it gets down to 97. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> also, though, uh, this episode does drop before the first GP of the year, which is going to be GP Santa Clara on January oh. 5th through the 7th in uh, Santa Clara, California, which just happens to be about 10 minutes from where I live and work. So all of you folks out there who want to come and meet one of us, I am going to be at the GP all day Saturday, and I'm going to be bringing there. I'm going to have a bunch of decks with me, and I'm looking forward to meeting as many listeners that I can. And I would love to just hang out and talk decks and play Commander all day with everybody. So if you're coming to the GP Santa Clara, just ping me on Twitter or meet us up and I will make sure we have a nice commander in spot that we can sit and play games all day long. Yeah, that's awesome. And you'll be tweeting out the location of that. Oh, yeah. I'll probably just, find uh, a table and tweet the number out when I get to it. And we will great. retweet it from our main account. Now, will you have an unmander deck with you? I hope so. I don't know if I can get one in time. I've been trying to, but, oh, man. I've got this awesome idea for building an X deck, and we're going to have to talk about that. It's going to be neat. I could just take any of my Demir decks and just put X as the commander, and it's still pretty much works. <laughs> pretty much. There's definitely going to be silver border <laughs> cards in my decks, though. I'm telling you that right now. Like, yeah. uh, sort of D&D, slam dunk. And uh, Oh, I pulled a foil one of those. Did you see? Yeah, I pulled so... a foil one, too, out of my Hasbro, um, <laughs> out of my Hasbro uh, con exclusives. Yeah, excellent. Um, and it's functionally different because yours has a watermark. Yeah, nice. it matters. And I think I might bring my unstable box with me then. That'll be fun. <laughs> so, happy new year and happy winter solstice holiday of your choice, ladies I hope and you gentlemen. Have a lovely Kwanzaa. Now, uh, this deck that we'll be talking about today is available on Deck Stats right now if you go to deckstats.net slash commander and MTG. You can find this deck. And uh, what is, uh, and of course, why don't we tell our listeners right now what the name of this deck is? Sean? It is Mono Red Ixalan Dinosaurs. <laughs> dinosaurs <laughs> implies there's more than one dinosaur. Indeed. Which is a lie. <laughs> 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 which is a lie. But believe me, That's when you funny. see this one, you'll know that he is. Plenty of dinosaur. <laughs> oh, he's got yeah. enough dinosaur for all of us. Although I think it's a she. Itali sounds like a a feminine name to me. Pause I, for one uh, second. Uh, actually, no. Oh, keep going. You, Don't worry. Can you hear? Can you oh. hear lots of people getting angry that we're discussing the gender of a dinosaur? Yes. It's not even already. relevant, man. <laughs> Already, uh, there are people who've who've unsubscribed from us because we've said it's a female dinosaur. It's a female um, dinosaur. We're deciding it's now, a female dinosaur. <laughs> now, Sean, when we got this preview card, you immediately fell in love with it. Do you want to introduce it to the world? 
I immediately said, I'm brewing that one, boys. I said, this one's one for me. And it um, blew my mind because this is as far from your wheelhouse as I could imagine. The, oh, no, this, this no, is... No, no, this is... The ability... Well, I mean, just a mono red Sean deck seems really... Oh, I'm about to show you some evilness. Oh, anyway, we should a... probably hear... Yeah, so Sean, tell us who the tell us about this card. I think well as I'm about to go through the deck, I think one of you should read it. I think Shivam should read it. All right, I'm excited. Ladies and gentlemen, our preview card for Rivals of Ixalan is one of my favorite cards I've seen. It's Etali Primal Storm. For four and two red, so six total mana for a legendary creature, Elder Dinosaur. Not just an elder <laughs> dragon, but an elder <laughs> dinosaur. That by itself I'm super excited about. And it's a 6-6. Six, six. So 6-6 six, six for 6, fine, old school, I love it. But what does this card do enough to make Sean Watson want to play it? Whenever Itali Primal Storm attacks, exile the top card of each player's library. Then you may cast any number of non-land cards exiled this way without paying their mana costs. The storm rages... And the earth breaks. Mm. Okay. Mm. That's just sensational. And sick, sick Raymond <laughs> Swanland artwork. What a lovely. Oh my God, this card, card is so good. <laughs> For six mana, it's a little bit pricey, but. I'm not sure it is, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's well, the that's the mana curve cost of your average dragon, isn't it? Six. Yeah. 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 It's six mana for a six six is right on the vanilla test. Like that's but there's so many ways to get this card out. Um I think the first things that struck me was that it's when it's an attack trigger, not a damage trigger. Yes. Like, yeah. All the big dragons like Croesus and Rith and all those people are damage triggers, and that's why I don't really like them. This is an attack trigger, which means I don't need to deal damage to you to get this going, <laughs> which frees up so much space in the design of the deck. And uh, it casts the creatures. It doesn't put, uh, or not creatures, sorry, non-land cards. It casts them, which means you still get cast triggers. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, hello there, Eldrazis. Uh, yeah, there's a couple in this deck. Now, hopefully you're uh, taking advantage of that. If, obviously, if they're Eldrazi, that's that's true. There's a couple of um, Eldrazi, yeah. Yeah, now we're going to get to some of the uh, some of the fun stuff that takes advantage of that, right? But Sean, tell us about what the deck is supposed to do. Okay, so it's mono-red, so it's got to be aggressive and up in your face. up in your, And it's an attack trigger as well. So the deck is going to do a couple of things. One, it's going to try and stick out its commander relatively quickly that a mono deck can do and get it to attack quickly. So we're going to look for haste enablers, that sort of thing. We're mm -hmm. going to try and get multiple attack triggers. So we're going to have multiple combat steps. We're going to have a couple of chaos cards in there just to make your opponent be uh, less equipped to interact with your board state. And the last thing we're going to do is um, some <coughs> mass <coughs> land destruction. <coughs> <laughs> Yes, oh, ladies and gentlemen, you. this is maybe the spikiest deck since I've joined the podcast. <laughs> this deck works fine. If you don't like mass land destruction, I still think the deck works really well. Uh, and I would just swap out those cards for something else that you enjoy in your favorite flavor. But I've put them in because when I read this card, it felt like a more fun version of Joya of the Gitu. Plus, it's also on theme. Yeah, well, it is. Yeah, it's right there in the flavor text, man. <laughs> Yep, it is. So we should probably read that flavor text. Is the storm rages and the earth breaks. Mm -hmm. mm. Which means, of course, that this needs you to play Goblin Warrens so that you can get your storm on. Or, I'm sorry, empty the Warrens. <laughs> God, no. So, I mean, <laughs> I've got a lot of classic mono red staples in this deck. Uh, things that are just pure power and fun. I did design this deck to be good <laughs> it's not it's not stacksy at all but as i say the mass land destruction does add that edge if your yeah. play group doesn't do it there's not too much in there you can so let's start with the basics you've chosen some haste cards i have and... yeah so classic haste buds the there's a, there's a few in the deck but the the three i've chosen uh hammer of perforos and fervor which are an artifact and enchantment respectively that give all your creatures haste 
Hammer of Perforos can also sack lands to put out some golems, but we don't worry about that too much. And then Anger, which is a little 2-2 two -two haste creature. When he's in yard and you control a mountain, and we're going to control a mountain, creatures you control have haste. And it's so on theme with Itali. Just anger, mm -hmm. fervor. Hamor of Perforos. Um, <laughs> <laughs> One note before we go on. The name is pronounced Itali, according to Wizards of the Coast. If you pronounce it any other way, <laughs> then you're going to a restaurant in New York, Italy. It's it's <laughs> That's like true. Tali from Mass Effect. It's like Tali, the 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 plate that you eat off of an Indian restaurant. Now, don't tell me about Indian <laughs> restaurants. My country invented them. Shiva. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> All right, go on. I'm sorry. I needed to interrupt that. Needed to get that because I know we're going to hear people saying it's actually your schlag. So yeah, like Tali from Mass Effect, but with E in front of it. Itali. Yes. It's Itali. 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 <laughs> okay. So you have the haste enablers, and it's the hammer, so, fervor, yeah, and the anger. hammer, fervor, and anger. There's there's a couple of others in the deck that um, do it, but they're the three sort of main ones. If you want. A better phrase. Anger's good because it's hard to get rid of. And not many people who are going to destroy a graveyard are going to target the mono-red player. Because you're not doing much with your graveyard other than yeah, anger being in there. Um, you might get an early Bajuka Bog for someone that's got no better target if anger's in there, but that's about it. Oh, sorry, Urabrask is in the deck as well. So there's a creature oh, haste the Of course, why not? <laughs> Everyone loves Urabrask. Um, not the most objectively powerful Praetor, but I reckon is the most subtly powerful Praetor. One note, uh, a little bird came and told me that Atali is a male. Okay. In which case... Well... The more you know. Well, I'm non-binary when it comes to dinosaurs. <laughs> okay, so the other thing that haste enablers do is they allow us to use more um, activated abilities that require tapping on creatures. Because one thing that puts us off them in Commander is that you have to have that creature stay on the table for a turn before you get to use it. Mm. Not in this yeah. deck. In theory, you should be able to have a haste enabler out. I mean, in theory. I mean, it won't always happen, will it? But we want to be attacking. We want to be attacking often. Any obvious haste enablers I've missed? I can't think of many. But yeah, and obviously you're going to have your, your standard uh, equipment boots that make you go fast. Yeah, I've got Boots and Greaves. Yeah, because there's a lot of single-target enchantments that do things like give you haste or charms or whatever, but they feel too narrow for the purpose of the commander in general. So I think yep. the choices you made are pretty solid. Now, Itali has... Uh, oh, I could just hear Sheevan whispering, Ourobras. I did. It was very unnerving. If it's not Sheevan, um, I've finally broken and the praetors <laughs> are whispering to me. <laughs> Hello, so now... Itali has uh, an, an attack trigger, as you mentioned. So what do we do about that? Uh, well, we want to exploit the hell out of that attack trigger. So we would like some extra attack steps. God, so, can, so many different ways you could do this. This is like one of my favorite things in playing red in Commander is just getting attack step into attack step into attack step. And uh, I think there's a lot of potential for silliness with this. It's very powerful, extra attack steps, and it's. Uh, I've mentioned it on other shows where we've talked about red haste and extra attack steps are two of the things that red uh, really they're like gasoline on your uh, on your deck. So if you've got red in your commander's color pie you, and you want to juice it up a bit, red is you know nitro button. I'm going for a Fast and Furious reference here, but I've never seen any of them films. <laughs> but yeah, just <laughs> go. Uh, so I prefer repeatable effects. So I've Fast got and Furious here, I... as done by Eddie Izzard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then the bald man who looks like a tree uh, drives <laughs> a tank into a train or something. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's best represented in Magic by Aggravated Assault. Yeah, it's really good. Um, which is you know an enchantment that allows you to pay five, untap all your creatures... After this main phase, there's an additional combat step followed by additional main phase. Activate this ability only anytime you can cast a sorcery. We've also got in the deck 
Sword of Feast and Famine, which every time you damage someone, you untap all your creatures. and No, sorry, you untap all your lands. Aggravate the Sword and Sword of Feast and Famine is hypothetically infinite attack steps. Mm. Huh. Which means you're casting infinite cards off at everyone's deck. Oh, that's pretty... Yeah, I thought it was funny. <laughs> oh, that, that's clever. That's clever. You can also do the same with Hellkite Charger, who, which is also in this deck, which is uh, a dragon that you can pay seven mana and untap all your creatures and take an additional combat step. Uh, and then there's a load of one-use ones like Relentless Assault and Seize the Day. Uh, Seize the Day's got flashback, so it's very good. Did you consider yeah. Combat Celebrant from uh, Amoncat? The, Not only uh, did I consider Combat Celebrant, it's in the deck. Oh, there it is right there. Yeah. <laughs> so, folks, like we've mentioned before, we have this deck up on our deck stats, so go take a look at it. If you're not seeing the cards on screen right now, it's uh, it's probably best that you go to the deck link. If I'm not putting the deck link up right now, go to the show notes and they're in there. For additional combat steps as well, we've got Godo Bandit Warlord, um, who when he attacks for the first time each turn, uh, you get an additional combat step. And also one of the best, although it is one of the more expensive cards in the deck now, Scourge of the Throne. Mm-hmm. I do mm. love that guy. Big old dethroning extra combat yeah. step dragon, which is pretty, pretty good. So we've got in total, I think, seven or eight, I can't remember what the final count was, seven or eight ways of getting additional combat steps. Uh, I think it's eight if you include the flashback on Seize the Day. So pretty good, I think. Um Yeah. Plus you've got all the haste enablers, so you should be able to rip this stuff off the top of your deck quite quickly and get going with it so what's the other thing that red is really good at gents that we don't (laughs) talk about very often Uh, now you've already spoiled this haven't you yeah mass land destruction so no we're not in boros so we couldn't use armageddon well before i talk about which cards i've used i've put it in here because if you wipe all the lands when you've got your commander out and cooking and you cast spells by attacking with your commander, you don't need land. Basically. (laughs) Turns out that that casting spells for free is a powerful thing in this game. (laughs) Who Who knew? And hey, I I don't even need a deck. I'm using yours. Yeah, so we had to pick (laughs) ones that don't wipe your creatures so we've got a few ways in there did you know there is a mass land spell that only costs one and a red to cast what it's (laughs) called impending disaster it's an enchantment it's one and a red during your upkeep if there's seven or more lands in play sacrifice impending disaster (laughs) and destroy all lands i've never seen this card before now you do have to let the board rotate before it goes off people are gonna sit there and go like are you for real? Why would <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, it's not much different to sticking an obliterate on the stack, uh, on the the suspended stack with Joyra, is it? Uh, that, no, it's not very different at all. That's not no, nice in fact, either. it's more efficient because it just happens <laughs> the next turn. You don't have to God. manipulate time counters. So, that's one. That's a little gem for you out there. If you do like to play with mass land destruction and you've not contemplated impending disaster before... God, this is this is kind of mean. You just throw it out there and go like, all right, what do you want to do about it? Yep, that's the plan. <laughs> wow. Who knew that Sean could brew a mean deck? This is, I, I... <laughs> this is sick, man. <laughs> this is really, really uncomfortable <laughs> right now. <laughs> We've got Boom or Bust. So oh. that's uh, a split card from Plain of Chaos. And it's either boom is destroy target land um, you control and a target land you don't control. That's two. Or it's six mana, destroy all lands. Straightforward, simple. Does what it says on the tin. <laughs> We've got the Myogen of Infinite Rage, which is a ten mana indestructible creature that can <laughs> destroy. But I mean, he's ten mana, 
you do have a chance of podcasting him for free when you attack with your commander. We've got a few ways of getting a lot of mana that I'll go over later. Oh my god, it tallies as each player, not just each opponent. Yeah, it does yourself as well. That means you too. Oh god, I didn't even realize that. Oh, so you don't want to be infinitely uh, decking all the players, Sean. (laughs) Well, no, you... Yeah, you do, because if you deck if you deck everyone's deck, right, that's not how the deck tries to win, by the way. But if you do manage to, everyone does it, well, it's your turn when you're attacking. So you say, all right, pass turn. Plus, you've got two Eldrazi Titans in your deck that reshuffle your yard back into your deck. Ah, uh, true, true. Mm. Not everyone has them. I mean, a lot of people do, but not everyone runs them. Uh, yeah. We've got Bend or Break, which isn't a true mass land destruction spell. I thought it was quite good. So each player separates all their land into two piles. Then an opponent chooses which pile and destroys it. That's uh, just... Or an opponent chooses it. Yeah. And then taps all the other lands that they have. So <laughs> I it's quite good fun. <laughs> <laughs> I've Did... never seen that card before either. Uh, <laughs> it's not great, but it's good fun. <laughs> It could be really neat, and I mean, look, this deck is obviously made for a very specific type of meta game. If your group is definitely the type of people who thought that Leovold was the best thing around, then this is definitely the type of deck that you would want to play in that situation. But moving from haste to mass line destruction, your next category is hate. <laughs> yes, just some cards that hate on your opponents. So what's the best mono red hate card? Uh, Blood Moon. Yes, the <laughs> like so, there's not even a hesitation. The most hateful card in Magic. <laughs> did you hear that noise? That was Josh Lee quite clicking off the episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have put Blood Moon in the deck because if you're playing mono red, um, and you want to stop people being able to cast whilst you still can cast, Blood Moon is the most efficient way of doing it. I mean, you have to in this deck because otherwise you're just leaving yourself open to any number of terror, Doomblade. The the listeners out there, that there might be a few that don't know what Blood Moon does. It's two and a red for an enchantment. All non-basic lands are now basic mountains. That's lovely. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) I've got some other non-basic land hate. Especially in the environment of four and five color decks we swim in nowadays, you see a lot of non-basic lands. In fact, I would say most decks have a majority non-basics in uh, once you get into four and five color decks. Possibly even in three color decks. So from the ashes, three in a red, destroy all non-basic lands. For each land destroyed this way, it's control and may search their library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield. Then each player who searches a library this way shuffles it. <laughs> now, late game, that can absolutely wreck someone. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, we love us some non-basics in Commander. I love that artwork, too. It's so silly. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> God, man, this deck is just... It's making me unhappy reading it. It's going to be so much fun to play. Well, I tried to brew it like you would a blue deck. Yeah, <laughs> What did you call it when we were talking earlier? The red command, uh, co- the bluest red commander. It's exactly the bluest red commander. This is like a pure control deck of just like rage. <laughs> Speaking of uh, it's awesome. things that draw hate, I did put in Ulamog and Kozilek, uh, the original Ulamog and Kozilek, just because if you do manage to rip one off the top of your deck, oh, you feel for good. fun. <laughs> you feel good and because it still casts them you still get the cast trigger so either pure hatred with Ulamog or drawing some cards with Kozilek is why he's in there and everyone likes Annihilator right because if you can get a hasted Ulamog or Annihilator 4 trigger onto your opponent and then attack with it a couple oh, of times God. it's almost like you've mass land wiped again <laughs> <laughs> this is a almost. this is a hateful hateful deck oh my god Everyone likes it. This is so good. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Um, Yeah. So, I mean, I feel a bit dirty doing this, by the way. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But also at the same time, I get to say, but it's mono red. I know. 
Way to take just, the worst color in EDH and just make it into this beautiful disaster. It's just like so mean. They're making some really good cards. Man, Itali is just I'm I'm in love. This card is nonsense. <laughs> And the fact that you're casting your opponent's spells as well. I mean, we've not even taken into consideration all the random crap you're going to get off the top of your opponent's decks for free. Oh my god, can you just imagine? (laughs) People love to stack their EDH decks with some crazy nonsense, and being able to just play it for free out of mono red seems like so funny. Like, oh, I'll take that Aurelia, sure I'll have another combat phase, let's go for it. (laughs) What else you got in there? You know what the dream is, right? The dream is to rip someone's mind's dilation off their deck. (laughs) (laughs) Your spells are my spells, and I'm in mono red. (laughs) I've never, I've never heard you so happy about mono red before. I I know. Honestly, it's like, it's like a late Christmas gift. This is just some (laughs) orthodox Christmas gift. That's not until the sixth of January. Um, yes. <laughs> oh good gracious this is some this is some nonsense man i love this all right what else do you got in this three more spells i'm just gonna highlight that um are excellent just with the deck so strionic resonator why cast a spell off everyone's deck when you can oh, no. cast two spells oh, off no. everyone's deck oh when you attack oh no that's all wrong strionic Res- yep. resonator by the way uh, two and tap to copy target triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets. When you attack with Itali, you trigger an ability. You do. <laughs> that is some. That is some nonsense. Wow. Mm. I love Stranic Resonator already, but holy good <laughs> gracious, did that just get dumb really, really <laughs> quick? <laughs> Why it's so important that it's an attack trigger, not a damage trigger. Yeah, I know. That is absurd. You block all day. I don't care. I'll take the stuff I off the top. I don't care if you block. I, I mean, I chucked Dark Steel Plate in the deck as well just to keep her indestructible. But that's that's where being Boros would be better because you could get all the cool indestructible stuff. Oh, goodness. But still. Goodness um, gracious me. <laughs> another card I just chucked in because it's the red card that you can be losing or not even playing in the game really all game. Cast it and just go, well, I win them, gents, or ladies and gents. Uh, insurrection. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Why not? You got all these combat exactly. steps. Why not? Indeed. <laughs> I love that you put this in wacky stuff. It's just stuff. It's like, know, look, there's not really a steal your creatures theme in the deck. There's a couple of cards that do it. But Insurrection's just, oh, I've got eight mana, and you lot have all been kicking the, uh, oh the my hell God. out of each Can other. Can you imagine if you're playing Itali, you attack, you flip off the top of your deck in Insurrection, then you get another combat phase, and then, then you just win? And it's just like, oh, that was beautiful and wrong. Oh, yeah. I mean, you'd need a lot of mana to do it, but we've got, like, Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx, and stuff to get a yeah, lot of Yeah, flip it off the top of, of your deck, deck for free. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't even think about flipping off the deck for free. Of course. Because huh. that is just <laughs> garbage. That is garbage town is what that is. <laughs> okay. Garbage. So th- the next card, the, the last <laughs> individual card, I guess. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to mention in the deck. The, it is Itali of the Primal Storm. And oh boy. we are trying... <laughs> So it's a theme card, this. And we are trying to disrupt our opponent's play to make it really hard for them to interact or know what's going on. Plus a little bit of chaos. You know, what? what's that quote from the Heath Ledger's The Joker about chaos making things fun? Anyway, someone will remember it. I'm an agent of chaos. <laughs> oh, and you know the thing about chaos. It's bare possibility storm now first two things one it's the kind of card that when i've just said possibility storm there's a whole bunch of players out there that have just gone yes love it (laughs) (laughs) and i like any card that garners that kind of reaction Uh, secondly possibility storm is miserable i love this card this card is like this is this is what i want out of like i wish this was a plane chase plane that you could just do (laughs) all the time 
Well, it would be Ravnica, wouldn't it? So uh, it'd be the Is It Guild in Plain Chase should have this as a card on Plain Chase. Shivan, would you like to read Possibility? I Actually, would... no, I want to hear Phil groan about it. Phil, yeah. will you read Possibility Storm for us? Possibility Storm. It's an enchantment <laughs> for three and two red. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever player casts a spell from his or her hand, ruin the game. <laughs> there you go. That player exiles it, then exiles cards from the top of his or her library until he or she exiles a card that shares a card type with it. That player may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Then he or she puts all cards exiled with Possibility Storm on the bottom of his or her library in a random order. Ha 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 ha. So, important bit, looking at the money show the words, it's whenever a player casts a spell from his or her hand. We don't <laughs> cast our commander from our hand, and also we don't cast spells from exile that Itali triggers from our hand. So we get a modicum of control over what we're casting, whereas our opponents have utter chaos. <laughs> that is terrible you are a bad I'm in bad love. person i am in love this deck is like a dinosaur train to crazy town and i want to be riding <laughs> train to crazy town <laughs> like this is so good it's so and it's mono red i can't believe it like you got to go for the full troll and like you know use arabian nights mountains or something <laughs> Well, I was thinking of putting in snow-covered mountains and maybe putting in an extra plane of lens somewhere. Or but, um, scred. Yeah, something like that. I'm not sure. <laughs> it, it, observations brewing the deck. Drawing cards in red, if you're happy to go down um, wheel effects, is a lot easier than people make out. Well, I mean, you should yes. always be using Wheel of Fortune or Winds of Change or Wheel of Fate or whatever, right? Yeah, like, I mean, that's uh, make, all... us, make us the wheel, all those things. I mean, those are kind of the only choices we have unless you want your uh, Faithless Lootings and uh, what's it, Sarkhan grabbing his head and screaming. Uh, <laughs> desperate Ravings, isn't that the other one? Yeah. <laughs> but I, I found it was actually, because I've brewed Mono White before. Uh, this is the first time I've actually brewed Mono Red properly without just doing like Perforos or whatever. And... I think there's a load of newer cards as well which make um, getting cards in red just easier. Like, a couple of the Chandras let you effectively wheel. Um, yes. There's a dragon uh, from a recent commander set, um, Runehorn Hellkite, that lets you wheel. And as long as you don't mind chucking... Because if you're chucking your deck as well, you've got the two Eldrazi Titans in there to cycle the cards you're discarding back into your oh, fair. deck, you see? Why you're... Yeah, wheeling. yeah, that total... Ooh, ooh. <laughs> so you're not going to deck yourself. You might deck your opponents, and I know you're letting your opponents draw seven cards yeah, each that's time fine. and stuff. <laughs> Go ahead, have but, those you cards. Know, <laughs> there's always that Simic player who's got 20 cards in his hand that's just had to discard them and draw seven. <laughs> God, oh, this is so exciting! This is so exciting. This deck is so. Oh, I'm, so I didn't. Th this is how good Itali is. I've never been so excited about brewing a mono color commander since oh. Gonti, maybe. And this is way more exciting than Gonti. It is way more. Oh, exciting. this card looks sick. This is like, this is like Gonti on steroids. Um, I mean, say, it just gets all the spells. It's oh, so. Lovely. Oh my god, the fact that <laughs> this card is so one, good. He has to cast it. Wow, this is a great, great card. Thank you to Watsi for giving us a fun, super exciting, and just like thrilling card to preview. Wow, I'm like stoked about this. Yeah, this is a ridiculous good card. <laughs> it's, it's like we're. <laughs> We've been giggling the whole episode just looking at this card going like, wow, there's so many dumb things you could do. I want to do them all. I have to ask, Sean. Yes. If you're getting extra attack steps yes. and extra attacks, don't you want Neheb the Eternal in there? Mm. So I did look at Neheb the Eternal. Um, 
I want one. And the Heb the Eternal for listeners yeah, is it's from uh, Amonkhet. Three and two red for a legendary creature, zombie minotaur warrior, tiniest text on a on a <laughs> standard legal card ever. <laughs> uh, four, six, and whatever it does, it doesn't matter. At the beginning of your post-combat main phase, add red to your mana pool for each one life your opponents have lost this turn. See, I looked at it, and it's a good idea, and you're probably right. And I think I dismissed it because I was brewing quite quickly. I was like, I was literally having yeah. a possibility storm of ideas. Um, and I think I dismissed it because I thought I'm not running any X spells. But thinking about it, I have an absolute giant ton of giant spells in there. Your mana curve is pretty ab- absurd, dude. <laughs> so I would probably cut something like. <laughs> charm breaker devils or something like that and stick in a head bin yeah although the charm breakers do get back your rituals and stuff so I yeah can see why that's those true are... i've got i mean the creatures in there the balefire dragons are pseudo wipe um i didn't put blasphemous in because i don't want to kill my commander right uh, plus i can try and cast someone else's board wipes uh dual caster maybe a dual caster doubles up on my double attack step spells hmm yeah, that's the thing. It's hard to pull those out. Uh, maybe the primordial. Yeah, the primordial seems to be the most like uh, disposable or combustible gear hulk. But I like. I mean, gear hulk. malignus is in there just because going. I'm going to attack you with, with haste. <laughs> a giant <laughs> creature for fun. I mean, malignus is pure cuttable. I guess malignus is one yeah. of those cards though that I just I love seeing him on the board whenever he shows up, just because it's like. You never see Malignus anywhere but Commander. It does something totally ridiculous, and it just brings a smile to people's face. But, yes, I would totally swap him for Naheb, because Naheb would just rocket power this deck. Maybe Heartless hit it, Sugu. I, I saw Malignus, and then, of course, the Commander has six six power, right? Yeah. And you're you're trying to get, get it as hasty, get her as hasty as yeah. possible. So... I was thinking about Trample. Now, Trample's hard to come by in red, but that's why I'm recommending Archetype of Aggression as well, one of my favorite cards from the whole Theros block. Like, this is uh, creatures you control have Trample, and creatures your opponents control lose Trample. Oh, yeah, this is a good card. And so with Malignus yeah. and your commander... And multiple, and multiple attack steps, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I think definitely Heartless Hidesugu just doesn't feel like... It fits the theme of the deck. I mean, it's a fun card, but but it's wacky. It's wacky, but I think <laughs> I think either of the cards you mentioned. Hey, everyone, lose half your life. Waka waka waka. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that I think that Naheb or Archetype would probably be better there, just because like I want to kill you with your stuff or with just insane combat things, not just tap lose half your yeah. life. Okay. The it's archetype's not... a good shout, actually. Yeah, uh, Neheb's a very good shout. Neheb, in fact, ed- listeners, I will edit it before the deck list goes up, uh, and I will cut out the probably the primordial for Neheb. Yeah, the red primordial's always been like the weakest of the lot, as far as oh, not sure about that. You'd be amazed how many times I've pulled someone's um, Eldrazi Titan. Or and with okay, yeah, fair, fair. Gone, yeah, I guess in some. in commander, it's much better when you're playing like multiplayer, like hard multiplayer games. With my creatures in this deck, if it didn't serve a purpose for drawing cards, ramping me, extra combat steps or land destruction, yeah, I said, well, what's really just a decent red card? So those, I guess, the three in there would have been the primordial malignus and. Um, the Conquering Manticore, which I'm gonna is cut for Urabrask already, mm. and Heartless as well. Sorry, Heartless hit it. I'll, I'll cut Heartless first for probably the archetype, and I'd maybe cut the Primordial for Neheb. I didn't think about the potential of all that, all that mana. Because oh I mean, my dude, goodness, I'm all that mana. Your deck has a really high curve for a red deck. Like, let's be real. It, it's not too bad. I mean, it, it's it's high, but it's not too bad. I think the two Eldrazi and the Myogen chuck that up quite high. Yeah, it's a, it's a 4.34 average uh, converted mana cost. And you do have two... <laughs> oh, and you have Ruby Medallion, which is good. You have 
You have two CC10 and two <laughs> CMC el- and one CMC11 card. So. Uh, <laughs> that's oh, hysterical. I suppose you could cut the Hellkite Tyrant, but hasted Hellkite Tyrant and nicking all of someone's yeah. mana rocks is often hilarious and is basically yep. a pseudo ramp spell. It's wacky. Wack, 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 wack. That's what I'm going to say every your time artifacts. I hit someone with It's the it. the Dex rubber chicken. <laughs> so, Sean, are you going to paper this out? Oh, my God. If he doesn't, I will. <laughs> I, think, I think we should all. We're, I mean, it's not like we're all playing together regularly. Yeah, we're not going to be sitting in a room with each other until at least 2019. So That's right. Um, yeah, this is great. This is such a sick and dumb card but uh, i think we should all pay for i mean it's got a relatively high dollar value it's yeah it's, 413 dollars yeah it's in part because wheel of fortune has exploded recently oh has it yeah well, 75 dollars alone what how much 75 for shut your me. mouth wow really wheel of fortune? Like 10 of them <laughs> Yeah, because uh, it's reserved, so people have been buying it out. That's is it really? I mean, you can cut Wheel of Fortune out of there and put in, I don't know, Winds of Change or something. Uh, you could probably cut um, the Chandra Torture Defiance. I'm guessing still has a lightly played revised Wheel of Fortune on TCG Player. $55. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, That's dude. Insanity. Goldfish has them at um, 79 That's... Yep. I. Okay. I'm so if you want to build this budget and you don't already own a Wheel of Fortune... I was hoping to pick one up at the GP. I guess I'm not going to now. <laughs> well, you are if you fork it over. Oh, a forked Wheel of Fortune Forks is always another fun. spell, yeah. <laughs> Chandra oh. Flame. I mean, if you want Utter Chaos, you could cut Wheel of Fortune and put Mana Flare in. Yes. <laughs> That would be so good. It does play against the theme of the deck of trying to stop your opponent's casting spells, though. In fact, it does the exact mm-hmm. opposite. It makes your opponent's cast spells really easily. The two Chandras have probably got a little bit of cash value you could cut and put in something different. Scourge of the Throne, I think, has quite a high dollar value as well. I mean, you guys can all look it up. This deck is definitely a little bit more on the pricier side, but everything in here seems to have cheaper equivalents or cards that you could just as easily slot in and still have a good time. Because really, the key, I think, to this deck is being able to get off multiple combat phases. If you can do that, the rest of it is kind of just yeah flavor as you like. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's everything we like about Yeleva, mm. except in a 6-6 six, six body. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just, it's crazy. Well, Sean, what an amazing deck. And by amazing, I mean vicious and dastardly. Good, good. <laughs> So thanks for hanging out with us, everyone. We hope you've enjoyed our foray into Elder Dinosaur Highlander. <laughs> I, and, uh, I'm so glad yeah. that this is an Elder Dinosaur. Yeah, how cool is that? Take that, Gishoth. I've been thinking about my Gishoth deck since we saw this, and I'm like, oh, it's just not as much fun anymore. <laughs> oh my god, can you imagine flipping this with Gishoth? <laughs> Oh. So, do oh. we reckon there's going to be a cycle of elder dinosaurs? Because we haven't I believe seen we were told that other... there were six of them. We've already seen two. So the fi- the Wooberg one plus one of each color. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Dibs on red. Or maybe there's a colorless one. God, please no! I don't. Be... Eldrazi dinosaur Highlander. <laughs> So, listeners, tell us what you would do with Itali. Itali is very inspirational. You can tell we've been giddy this entire episode. Let us know what you would do with it. What did we miss? What would you include? Go up to the deck stats and tell us right there. It'll be awesome. Or tell us in the show notes somewhere. Just tell us. Special thanks to our patrons, of course, who show our support. We wish we could have shared this with you before everybody else, but we just couldn't. We can't share this, of course before the release date so they show us they support us by donating to us and we really appreciate that they stuck with us through the patreon shenanigans in early december oh god yeah yep 
Um, so now each week we call out three of you, and Sean, of course, who is an expert in Scandinavian names, <laughs> will be taking the lead on this one. <laughs> Well, it's true. Um, my many years traveling the fjords of Sweden and Norway um, <laughs> have given me what I like to call a Norse tongue. It's cold. <laughs> <laughs> and only has one eye. Um, and with that in mind, I'd like to thank Kim Jorgensen. Or, as Phil pointed out, Kim... Yeah, zero. <laughs> if this, if if it were an American pronouncing it, it would definitely be Kim. Yeah, zero. <laughs> Thank you for your patronage, Kim. Yes, and for, for as long as that lasted. <laughs> <laughs> Unsubscribe. Click. <laughs> I, I often wonder if people think we're actually we're mocking our our patrons, and we're not we're really mocking it's ourselves. Just, we are. We can't pronounce anything. So, like, like the next person, Joss Hua Hutchins. Joss Hua. Joss Hua. Yeah, and Joss Hua. Ja- <laughs> Joss Hua. As you know, Joss Hua was uh, one of the people we spoke to on Facebook. He sent us a message, and we were going back and forth chatting with him. Yay. Yes, I've spoken to Joshua. Sorry, I yes, mean, you have. Joshua. Joshua. And uh, hello, Joshua. <laughs> what the heck? And no. Joseph and Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Hey, Joe. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Joe, because without your continued support, we could not do this. Hey. Joe, where are you going with that dollar in your hand? <laughs> He's going over to Patreon. Going to donate know. it to Commander Inn. <laughs> and then they're going to destroy all my land. <laughs> Shiva, please take us out. <laughs> Ourabras. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Go, Mandarin!